Hello everyone, the rest of Aquarium X here, and I've got an isopod unboxing. These are courtesy of Supreme Gecko. So thank you, Wally. I'm excited. There we go. We sort of did a trade. We both had a couple of species the other didn't have and decided to uh, help each other out that way. So that was cool. I like to do that when I can. Oh, they're looking good here. So let's start out first with these guys. These are Florida Fast. The uh, scientific name is, I think, Atlantosha Floridana. That's, I'm not sure if that's exactly how you pronounce it, but oh, there we go. I want to make sure we get some better light. Okay, there, I switched the light on so you can see a little bit better here. These are uh, called Florida Fast because they can move pretty quickly. They also breed fairly quickly. Uh, they're a lot like the Powder Blues, Porcelionides prurinosis. And, um, but from my understanding, the research I've done, let's say they, not only do they tolerate moisture, but they require a little bit more moisture than the, uh, the Powder Blues. The Powder Blues are pretty adaptable in terms of humidity and moisture, but I've noticed in the really wet setups they don't do as well. So. I'm interested to see if I can get these going, for example, in my dart frog vivarium. I have some tarragonas in there, but uh, I'm kind of trying to round out the species that I have that are good for various types of cleanup crews, and I think this is going to be a great addition to that. All right, now I've got the light sorted out, I think, and we will continue. With the unboxing. These are Porcelio ornatus yellow spot. These are um, another one of the giant Spanish Porcelio species. They get quite large, not as large as you know Magnificus or Hoffman's egg eye, but they get big and they have some yellow spots um, on the rear part of their carapace and these vary quite a bit from individual to individual But you can see those little yellow spots on some of those there These are a little bit uh, Maybe easier than some of the other Spanish Porcelio species um, And they're very active Both Wally and other people have mentioned that these are really active ones if you want to see them out in the daytime They're a good species for that. So I love that you can also see how they have those characteristic long uropods on some of the specimens there, probably the males, like most other giant Spanish Porcelio species. So I'm excited to get these culturing. And that one's excited to get out, so I better make sure that doesn't happen. There we go. All right, let's get these guys into their enclosures. So because the Florida Fast isopods are a little um, smaller, I'm going to put them in this a ventilated deli cut for a little while just to get the population going and then I'll move them to a larger container But sometimes with these smaller species, it's nice to start out as something small So I'm gonna do that and then I'll move them um, So let's take a peek at these again Looks like there are a lot of them in here Here I'm gonna see if I can fiddle with the light once again It's uh, not cooperating with me too well I'm going to move it over there. That looks a little bit better, I think. Yeah. Okay. So, here we go. I'm going to kind of... Whoop! I lost one down onto the... the uh, mm, I'm going to have to use a piece of paper to scoop that one up. Sorry. I'm kind of missed there. Missed the... There he goes. Oh, I had him. Or her, I don't know which one it is, of course, too small to tell. Okay, now we got everybody recovered, and I'll put them all in there. You know, I noticed that uh, Wally has packed these in a similar substrate to what I will do for some of the smaller species. They're just easier to um, transport if you put them on a uh, soil-like substrate and just you know, you pack them and they travel that way. That seems to work really well. I'll do that with my dwarf species, and this is a pretty small species too, so that makes a lot of sense. You can see why Wally would do that. Looks like here, it's got a piece of egg carton. Some of the isopods were hiding in there. You can see, I don't know if you can see, there's a couple 
one or two in there running around but uh, anyway that's uh, nice for them to have that as they're traveling something to grab onto and so on so we'll get those going thank you Wally and now I'm going to move the uh, Ornatus container so we can put those in all right as you can see here there's a much uh, deeper substrate much larger container got a nice slab of thick cork bark for them and some leaf litter some magnolia leaves and magnolia pods for them um, I'm gonna turn this over I think it'll be easier to see them if we just put them on the flat part of the slab and later I can turn it back over this way we can get a good look at the isopods as they come out and take the, the egg carton material out once again he's got some nice substrate down there in the bottom and you never want to waste that because you never know if there are going to be little ice pods in there or you missed one something like that there we go you put a nice number in here there we go let's get a close-up on a couple of these huh i like to here's one that's fairly large size and they do get bigger than this this is an immature specimen you can see those yellow dots so it is aptly named there are quite a there are a couple different uh, morphs of this species one of them that Wally uh, recently unboxed was the um, the high yellow and they're amazing they're covered they're not covered but they have a lot of yellow pigmentation all over their whole body and I would be interested in getting some of those eventually but these are quite attractive I like the little the little markings there and I love the fact that they are active and easy to breed. Let me get the focus back in there. So I look forward to watching these. I think activity, diurnal activity, especially in isopods, is a real plus that a lot of people don't think about when they're getting isopods. Um, for example, I have some uh, Armadillidium species magic potion that are really attractive isopods, but they're hiding all the time. And that's, that's just not very very fun so it's nice to have isopods like these that will be out and about doing things um, as always I have some links in the description to my website so you can see my isopod collection see my price list that kind of thing also I have some links to various isopod supplies that you can pick up if you'd like to do that and uh, please stay tuned because on uh, both Wednesdays and Fridays I post videos all on aquarium and vivarium pets of, of different types please feel free to leave a comment a like or to share this video and if you haven't already subscribe and then click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video